Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time for our hot topic, where we're talking about the reps' move to check indiscriminate sale of drugs. And joining me to discuss this is Dr. Kefes Wilder, um, is a vice president of ANAD. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Okay, good morning to you all in the studios. And um, well, as you asked, drugs are not uh, biscuits or sweets that people toil around with. Drugs are in themselves poisons. And if not handled appropriately and professionally, drugs can be counterproductive of the aim that is meant for. So uh, drugs for us in the medical field are regarded as weapons because we use them to treat, we use them to administer, and we use them to uh, do a whole lot of things. But uh, as you rightly said, drugs are not things people should just handle because they have access to drugs are administered. And drugs in themselves are chemical weapons. So even if it is used for its purpose, if it is not used appropriately, then the result of its use can end up to be depreciating. So that is our idea of what drugs are. And as you rightly said, these are things that have to be regulated from the side of government, from the side of policymakers, and all that are involved in its usage. Okay, so talking about, um, you know, bringing it to the policymakers now, we're on to um, indiscriminate sale of drugs. So you've said, you know, they can be a weapon, and if you don't use them appropriately, it can be counterproductive. But we're talking about people um, not being sold these drugs, maybe due to indiscrimination. Um, what do you think? Do you think this is the right move by the House of Representatives to, you know, just check it? Um, it's okay to you know, ask these people, you need to have a doctor's prescription because that way, you know, we're sure that whatever you're coming to um, buy these drugs for, it would not be counterproductive for you. So it is specific to maybe treat an ailment or, you know, just help alleviate whatever problems you have in your body. But there, there might be some people that, you know, want to get this and there's some form of discrimination. So do you think this is the right move by the um, representatives to check this indiscriminate sale of drugs? Well, the whole idea is to bring a balance between use and abuse. Mm. And for everything, not just drugs, for everything we see in society today, if not checked, abuse is inevitable. So all uh, I think I want to believe, I've not gone through the details of the bill the National Assembly is working on, but generally speaking, in every same climb, if you look at countries with very good health indices, there is a lot of control on the usage of drug. And I don't think as a country we are any different from those regulations because, as I said earlier, drugs are not uh, cookies. They are not sweets or biscuits that you could just go get them and decide on how to use them and when to use them. And that is why drugs have a requirement that is called prescription. And except that is given, any other use outside that is for us in the medical field is abuse. And uh, I, I, I want to commend the National Assembly in this move. But it goes beyond that. The, when you enact a law, there are a lot of other factors that will go around the implementation. And I believe that is as important as the law itself. Because if you move to get to a point where drugs will be regulated, then what system have you put in place to making sure that the regulation is done without bottlenecks? And I think that is my take on that. And well, it's a good move, but the other aspect of it has to be put in place too, because uh, the Nigerian population is, uh, is, is made up of a large number of uh, ignorant citizens. So not ignorance with regards just literacy, 
but ignorance with uh, with regards health seeking uh, behavior ignorance with regards handling of drugs so that that that, that i think okay. is important and we'll, it's a we'll way to, to go we'll come back to what you would like as a medical practitioner to be in that law if if they're talking about it because it has not been passed already so i'm sure you will have some inputs to that law if if you have the opportunity but right now um I know that there are drugs that are called prescription drugs and there are drugs that are off the counter. So when we're talking about drugs, are we talking about everything drugs, maybe including the Agbo that uh, the, <laughs> the women hawk all around, the uh, Dogoyaro that people drink and all that. So when, when you're talking about regulating the sale of drugs, what kind of drugs are there? Is there a discrimination between these drugs or every drug you can think of will be in that uh, category? Well, every drug should have a regulation, every in every sense of it. Because as simple as a pill for pain, if you don't regulate it, it can be abused. So uh, when we talk about regulation for drug, we're not restricting it to just the uh, conventional uh, drugs that you would need a, pre a doctor's prescription to get. But the regulation here is all encompassing. Let me give you an example. You have someone hawking drugs under a sun temperature of over 40 degrees. Now, these drugs have ways of storage, and they also have regulations as to what temperature they can function under. So instead of like this kind of drugs to those harsh temperatures, obviously you are not you are selling you are not selling more than just a powder encapsulated in a pack. So uh, these are the regulations, not just restrictions to access, but as well restrictions to how these drugs are used, how they are sold, who buys them, and who sells them. So this is very important, really. Okay, so since we're talking about um, the use of drugs, I mean, I live in a generation whereby there is drug abuse. Um, so you see things like some cough syrup that the young ones are taking, um, they just take it and it makes them feel high. Or, you know, some other pills that they just pop, these are drugs that you can get off the counter, but then they overdose it and it gives them a certain type of high. So how do you think um, we can combat this? I know there is a prescription policy that they're trying to bring. That's what the, the reps are trying to do now with this move. But how do you think we can combat this? Because a lot of times, you know, there might still be some loopholes whereby um, someone can as well go with a prescription, but then they're buying it to still get high. So aside this whole um, prescription policy that the reps are trying to introduce, what other way can we make sure that we combat the abuse of drugs in Nigeria? Okay, the, the law in itself that the National Assembly is trying to work on it's not just about the law regulating prescription that we have to get clear. We have to understand also that the regulation goes beyond just getting a prescription before you have access to these drugs. Mm. It includes production, it includes who sells drugs, it includes how these drugs are sold, it includes the but the regulations around even the chain of uh, movement of these uh, medications. So for, for, for of course, the, the, the point here is this have to be regulated under those conditions. Okay. Okay, um, so I understand that this needs to be regulated, but I'm just wondering ways we can, you know, literally combat it. And the reason why I'm asking this is there supposed to be some form of awareness. I know mm. some people, you know, go around um, asking for or putting out awareness. Um, there are NGOs that talk about it that, you know, even help people who are probably hooked on drugs at the moment. So I'm wondering if there are other ways, like I've just mentioned, awareness that could actually, you know, just help to combat this this kind of menace of a situation that we have in Nigeria? Uh, 
Hello, doctor. Yes, it's important we have that too because it's just be. Am I audible, please? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we can go ahead. Okay, all of that is also important because it's just it's beyond just having a law. As I said earlier, there are lots of other things that would have to come into play. Things like advocacy, things like educating the populace, things like having the people that are within the circle of the use of this drug come together and harmonize strategy and harmonize a way forward of having this as a corporate social responsibility. Because it's, it, you know, when you handle things that have capacity to harm people, it's good you also have the moral conscience to make sure that this do not go out to cause harm to people. And that is very, very important. And as you said, the coming in of NGOs, the coming in of civil society organizations, and also those within the cycle, the media, and of course what you people are doing now to making sure that people understand what drugs are and how those things are used. Okay, well, right now, maybe there's some form of regulation because uh, uh, people cannot even buy the drugs anymore. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the orthodox drugs now. Uh, a card of paracetamol is almost like 500 naira, so a lot of people are not buying it. So there is, it, it opens another chapter now of something that is worrisome. People are now going to the traditional medicine, which has no form of uh, a dosage, mm -hmm. which has nothing like that. So. Where, where is the place of traditional medicine in all of this? Because people may be running back to the traditional uh, medicine. And what is the medical world doing about our traditional medicine so that we can have some regulation in that quarters as well? We can know the dosage that we are taking. We can know the dangers and the benefits and all that and improve upon it so that, uh, you know, we can't just be talking about the orthodox medicine and leaving our traditional medicine, which may also have adverse effects. Okay, yes, you're right, because uh, these are, well, I say, drugs in quotes that do not even have prescriptions or guidelines. So uh, Africa has a whole lot of belief in that system. You know, but uh, again, that has to be regulated, as you said. Well, the, we, we have a body, a regulating body for that, currently operational in the country that have their uh, terms that guides the use as well as uh, vetting what contents are in these uh, medications. But beyond all of this, it is also important for people to understand the dangers of this medication. Because for, for those traditional concoctions that are put together in the name of herbal medications, have very harsh adverse effects. Some would can has have a capacity of shutting down your kidneys by just taking them. So uh, a lot of work needs to be done in that area because the economy is hitting hard and people will resort to what really they can afford because if we have an alternative and it is beyond our reach, which is the orthodox for instance, and then the traditional one is readily available and is something that can be afforded. People naturally will tend to gravitate uh, towards that. But, you know, the, the problem is in the societal understanding of the dangers of this. Because now, if you are told that uh, Mr. A took this and got fine, and obviously, maybe the person is someone you know, and is someone you had gone through the profile of his illness, and you discover that ah, this this really works. Of course, it's convincing. And the people retailing these traditional concoctions are people that have high convincing power. So you will now see the whole lot of uh, glamour, belief, and pursuit of what they are doing really it's really bad but i think a lot needs to be done in that regard 
time they will involve the medical practitioners who will really know what to say and not just stay there and make the laws that may not be all uh, encompassing. Uh, but we do hope that this will come to pass and that we can also afford drugs and the drugs <laughs> that we need to afford. We are right. praying for that as well. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Kefis Wilder, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you. Nice having me with us. It's WID. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kefers Wilder is the Vice President of National Association of Resident Doctors. He was talking to us on uh, the move by reps to uh, enact laws uh, that will check indiscriminate sale of drugs. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with the next hot topic.